Return and delete. All right. Hello. Um, OK. All right. Sculpture, as many people have said today, is now capable of including any activity to at all. It has become the Statue of Liberty of Art. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp besides the golden door. Sculpture's new colossus shelters all media. Sculpture is essentially synonymous with art. Everybody is an artist. And any way by which everyone is an artist is part of our curriculum. This leaves us trying to solve an equation where A equals teachers, B equals students, C equals sculpture, which is equals to everything, and the function, curriculum as a function of A plus B plus C is greater than the semester. <laughs> or even worse, curriculum function of A plus B plus C is greater than eight semesters plus graduate school. <laughs> sculpture expands, but the length of a semester remains constant. We don't, won't solve this problem unless we question our basic premises. In Western culture, we can see a similarity between the classroom and the theater. And I propose we consider the classroom as a form of public sphere. Jürgen Habermas wrote, a portion of the public sphere comes into being in every conversation in which private individuals assemble to form a public body. So are our students a public body? that behave as a public body, unquote, when they confer in an unrestricted fashion, that is, with the guarantee of freedom of assembly and association and the freedom to express and publish their opinions. Despite some similarities, students are not a public. Because publics are self-organized, they don't need a registrar. Publics come together of their own accord, not according to the semester schedule. And publics confer in an unrestricted fashion, they do not follow a curriculum. Michael Warner wrote that the public is, unquote, a kind of social totality. Its most common sense is that of the people in general. It might be the people organized as the nation, the commonwealth, the city, the state, or some other community. Warner also describes a second kind of public. A public can also be a second thing, a concrete audience, a crowd witnessing itself in visible space, as in a theatrical public. A performer on stage knows where her public is, how big it is, where its boundaries are, and what the time of its common existence is. And finally, he describes a third public, the kind of public that comes into being only in relation to texts and their circulation. Top-down curricula are written for the first kind of public, for young people today, or for liberal art students. This curricula require a belief in some universality that reduces students into generalized identities. This leads to teaching for the lowest common denominator. The second public is what we here in this room experience in class. Students assemble in a concrete space for an amount of time. The artist teacher knows who they are talking to and plans specifically for them. It is an improvisational and responsive curriculum. But in the third public, a class could be a public that has come into being in relation to the circulation of texts. We would then be unbound by the class period, unrestricted by the physical classroom, and free of pre-existing identities. Lastly, let's consider a complement to the classroom as a public. A public body is comprised of individuals. And Ranciere would say, in quote, in front of a performance, just as in a museum, a school, or a street, there are only individuals weaving their own way in the forest of words, acts, and things that stand in front of them. The collective power which is common to the spectator is not the status of members of a collective body. So can we reconcile a classroom as a public while simultaneously supporting the collective power that Ranciere defines as the power of translating in their own way what they're looking at? It is the power to connect it with the intellectual adventure which makes any of them similar to any other. The common power is the power of the equality of intelligence. I believe that as an artist, I have some of the ability to do what Ranciere asked when he asked that our teaching and our performances be put to the test, not our capacity of aggregation of a collective. 
but instead our capacity which makes anybody equal to everybody. And as an artist, I have been able sometimes to do this. I grew up in a country with more governments than years of independence. Therefore, we studied the Mayans, Columbus, independence, and then skipped to the present. In 2010, I created an event where the public was invited to come and dictate the complete history of Honduras. I asked if our history existed stored among our individual memories. People streamed in and dictated their stories and became what Ranciere calls for. An emancipated community is in fact a community of storytellers and translators. At school, but outside my formal classes, I borrowed from community-based grants such as Detroit Soup and Portland Stock to create an event open for MFA candidates and alumni. Admission is $5. The money adds up to a grant and entitles each attendee to soup, the option to propose one project and one vote. At the end of the evening, the project with the most votes gets the money. Are the students forming a community of storytellers and translators? In my graduate seminar, we often discuss readings adapting a method created by artist Ariana Page. Grads email, email me questions that arise from their reading. During class, the students sit facing each other. I read a question selected from their emails, and for a minute, each student answers to the person facing them. They reverse roles for another minute, and then they have a two-minute conversation. After everyone shifts and faces a new person, and a new question is asked. And I ask myself, emancipation still? Unfortunately, by the time I teach Sculpture One, I have reverted to this. <laughs> My abilities as an artist, when I combine Ranciere's community of storytellers and translators with Warner's public that come into being only in relation to text and their circulation, seems to diminish the closer I get to being a teacher in the classroom. But I suspect that it is the way out of our predicament. Thank you.